Hello. Hi. Um, welcome to the last uh, in a series of uh, talks that we've given in, at the summit on uh, visibility into what's going on in your OpenStack cluster. As we've already mentioned in the last two talks, in order for you to uh, diagnose problems or in order for you to even operate your cluster efficiently, it's sometimes very often to know, important to know what's going on in your cluster because without that, uh, it's extreme, as you might have noticed if you've been an operator, that it's extremely hard to figure out things from just all the cilometer data that you're seeing or all the logs that you're collecting. So um, the last two talks were on network visibility. This last talk is on storage visibility and how we can improve the storage performance. And um, in this particular talk, we are going to go deeper into Ceph. And the, here is my awesome team. Uh, and we've done this work together, all the three pieces uh, of uh, work that we've presented. And we have a lot of things in the pipeline. And thanks for all your feedback in uh, all the previous talks. And we we'll hope that you'll give us some more feedback in this one. So the question, obviously, is that why do we need storage visibility? Now, um, if you look at the OpenStack as a layer cake, you have the OpenStack APIs, and you have Swinder, Cinder, Swift, and Glance APIs. But then, when suppose you're running a big data or a Hadoop job, and your DFS node fails, how do you know that it's a network error, or a storage error, or maybe some disk drive has failed physically? You have no way of knowing unless you have visibility into what's the back end for um, the storage layer. And now I'll hand it over to Mark, who will talk to you about the back end that we choose, which is Ceph, and how we can get more visibility into Ceph, and how we could, what's more important is not just visibility, we could use uh, the insights that we get out of uh, uh, the uh, analytics we do to optimize Ceph even further. Thank you, Debo. Um, so, what do we have at the last layer? So we have the storage jungle. This is a mysterious land. Only the very few experts who are trained in the art of storage can navigate it. And even them sometimes find it very, very hard to find what they're looking for fast. So for example, the other day we were running a storage experiment, and one of our nodes failed. And that's a picture of us after debugging for two hours with no success. This is why we need uh, storage visibility. What can we do with it? So possibilities are endless. For example, once we have the data, we can calculate in real time what's the optimal distribution for our, for our objects. Also, uh, as it has been mentioned, we can perform failure detection. If something's going wrong and we have real time data, we will know right away. A very cool feature is that we can expose the underlying configuration, make it easier to change by the system administrator, and any slight change in this configuration will turn out in different data. So you can spot any performance change right away. This will allow you to tune your cluster. So, okay, you can do very cool stuff, but we need some use case to prove it. We decided to get safe visibility. Uh, just was one question. How many of you know how Ceph works? Can you raise your hand? Okay, not bad. How many of you do you use it as part of OpenStack? Not so many. Okay, so I'm gonna spend two slides doing a very, very quick introduction to Ceph. In this slide, you can see the Ceph architecture diagram. At the very bottom, we have Rados. Anything you do with Ceph will get stored as an object by Rados. On top of it, we have libRados. This will allow us to interact with Rados from the application level. Then Rados Gateway, the one on the left, the gray one, is a REST gateway compatible with Swift and S3. Then we also have RBD, which is block storage, useful for Cinder when we're talking about OpenStack. Finally, we have the Ceph file system, which is a distributed file system. So now that, now that, that we know the architecture of Ceph, let's see how Ceph stores an object. For this, we need to introduce three very simple concepts. First, OSD. This stands for Object Storage Device. This is essentially the physical node where you're going to store your uh, object. 
Then we have the placement groups or PGs, which is a collection of objects. And finally, we have the pools, which are a collection of placement groups. So let's say we want to store a file called foo in a pool called bar. First thing, Seth will get the pool and will retrieve the number of PGs in this pool. With this number and a hash of the name, it will apply the modulus operation and the result will be the PG where the object will be stored. Then Seth will retrieve the crash rule from this PG and this crash rule, and with this crash rule, we'll get the list of OSDs where the object will be saved. Um, then the object will be saved to the first OSD, and this OSD will take care of the replication. So we save it one time, and then it gets replicated. So nowadays, there's several good Ceph dashboards that provide visibility and work well, but we wanted to create one that's tightly integrated inside Horizon. For that, we decided that we wanted this kind of visibility. First of all, we want to be able to monitor our Ceph cluster. What's going on? What's the OSD status in real time? How is any object being distributed in our uh, Ceph cluster? We want to know that. We also want to be able to see what crash rules we are using at that time and also be able to add new ones, edit them, or remove them. In order to do that, we created uh, the Ceph Horizon panel. And now my coworker Kai is going to demo it. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me introduce our dashboard to you. And there are four tabs in our dashboard. You can see, uh, now let's take uh, the first tab. The, over the overview tab has some basic information about our cluster, including the health, the uh, space usage, and some information about the monitors, uh, information about OSDs, and, and the metadata servers. And let's scroll down a little bit. And here it is. Uh, this is the graph uh, representing the uh, historical and real-time I.O. data. And we have several uh, metrics, and you can simply uh, click on it, and it will be updated automatically. And you can see the uh, read and write times, and the uh, uh, read by and write bytes goes to this cluster. And you can see the history of uh, space usage. This graph can be really useful uh, for detecting the failure. For example, when you wake up in the morning and you find out that your cluster is not working. So what happened last night? You just simply log in our uh, dashboard and see mm, the exact data like this. And you can even uh, export it as a picture and attach it to your report. Let's go to the second tab. And the second tab is uh, representing the topology of our, our cluster. In this example, it simply uh, presents the logical, uh, I mean, the physical uh, location of our cluster, including the, every, the node information of every OSD. You can see the uh, CPU, disk, and memory usage, and some information about the uh, SF. And when you create a new OSD, it will show up here. And the green means it's up and running. And let's check out the watch feature. Say, let's trigger a, a benchmark here, and it's running from a VM in OpenStack, and see, go back to the, OK. Now, on every OSD, we can see there is a, a donut chart. It represents the percentage of read and write requests goes to that OSD. And what's more, you can see the hit of each OSD in terms of the number of requests. And just like this. And you can even click on the OSD and see the detail of the information. OK, let's go to the third tab. In this tab, uh, it lists the, the crash loops using in the cluster. And you can create like uh, a crash loop called Tempo 1. And it will use the default bucket. Mm, you know, uh, crash loop can be used to uh, determine the, how your object going to distribute on the cluster. For, his, for example, you want one of the copy goes to the place on the 
SSD, and the, the other two uh, copy paste on normal OSDs. Then you can use the cross loop. Okay, let's go to the fourth tab. Uh, as we know, when we use the Ceph as the backend for Cinder, for example, your volume will be uh, consists of thousands of objects and uh, distributed across several OSDs and on placement group. You can see the how the distribution is and see like we have 44 objects on the placement group 3.2e. And let's scroll down a little bit and see. The second graph is shows the object distribution on the OSDs. And you can see there, uh, uh, the OSD6 is acting as the primary OSD for 18% of objects. Okay, uh, let's go back to the slide. Okay, uh, we have now have see how the panel works and how, uh, what kind of information we can get from the uh, panel. So is it useful? Uh, our answer is yes, but our, our work is not enough. So let's imagine uh, if there is a bottleneck in our cluster. So let's go back to the panel and run a computer job again. And what we saw is something like this feature. The load of OSD is abnormally high. And then we try to uh, reduce the weight of OSD6. And after all the um, placement group come back to the clean and active state, we try to run the benchmark again. And, and this time, we witness a better load balance. And so far, we have seen how we gain visibility in Ceph and uh, how we convert it in a, in, a, in a panel in Horizon. So it's now time to see what we can do with this uh, visibility in terms of optimization. So first, we can do a reference uh, storage node directly. Say, if you have a high performance LSD, you may uh, want to increase its weight a little bit so that it can take more responsibility. And with the help of our dashboard, you can see the, uh, how it reacts to the computer job in the real time. And in the following few weeks, we are going to add a benchmark tab in which you can simply trigger a 10 second or 20 second benchmark so that uh, you can analytics the performance in terms of bandwidth, uh, latency, and IOPS. And in the future, we plan to uh, have all these analytics and uh, change uh, in take place in a completely automatic way. So finally, uh, let's summarize what we can do with storage usability. Uh, first, we can reduce the downtime by detecting the potential um, problem in, uh, as soon as they take place or even before they take place. And we can use this visibility to uh, tune our system and see immediate result and see if the configuration is good or not. And what's more, we can provide predicts and historical data for the future prediction. So what's the most important part is there's plenty of insights that we are waiting for us to, to find. So we, plan, uh, we are very, uh, we really want to see how the community thing is the better, what, what, what kind of insights the community would be interested. So please scan this QR code and provide uh, some feedback. That's, that's all, thank you.